Okay guys, in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to Autodesk Inventor. Autodesk Inventor is a CAD software that can create simple 2D drawings to complex multi-part 3D models. To create anything on Inventor, you simply add or subtract one form or shape to another. We can also create objects by their boundaries, like points, edges, and surfaces. When you open Inventor, this is the general screen layout. The start screen displays a ribbon with buttons and can show recent files. Click New and go to ENUS. There are multiple file types that you can select. Parts, assemblies, drawings, and presentations. The two most important are standard IPTs and standard IDWs. Go ahead and double click on standard IPT. When an IPT opens, you will see that the ribbon tabs have changed. Ribbon tabs are common tools, settings, and functions. The application menu shows common functions throughout different softwares, like New, Open, Save, and Export. The browser is what I consider the most important thing about your drawing. It keeps track of your object step by step on how you created it. Down here in the bottom is a 3D triad or 3D indicator. It helps you keep your orientation throughout the creation of your part. In the opposite corner, is the view cube. When we start to draw something, we will demonstrate how the view cube works. Within each ribbon, things are divided into panels. For the 3D model ribbon, we can see that panels are divided into create, modify, patterns, and surfaces. The graphics window is where you create your object. The status bar down here at the bottom helps you keep track of what you're doing and shows information about your screen location. When we click on Start 2D Sketch, we see that three different planes appear. Our XY plane, our YZ plane, and our XZ plane. In the middle is the origin. If we click on the XY plane, we can see that the origin is clearly marked. Creating sketches is easy but can be frustrating if you try to do too many steps at once. Some tips to help you create objects. Make a rough sketch, close but not perfect. Keep it simple, yet proportional. And last, exaggerate the angles so that they don't lock into place with anything else. Let's go ahead and draw something. Go up to the ribbon and click on Line. Create the following drawing. As you can see, none of my lines are perfect, and that is okay. As long as we have a general idea of what we are drawing, we can add and subtract dimensions to make it look correct. We can also add constraints. Constraints are dimensions, and they're also relationships. Coincident blocks, 
points together with other points. Collinear allows two lines to be along the same line. Concentric makes two circles or arcs line up to have the same center. Parallel makes lines parallel with each other. Perpendicular causes lines to create right angles. Hor horizontal and vertical make lines be either horizontal and vertical and makes lines and circles touch at one point. Let's use some of our constraints to make this into something more usable. I'm first going to click on my horizontal constraint. Any line that I want to be horizontal, I find it and I click on it. Next, click on vertical constraint. Any line that I want to be vertical, I can do that. Now, I want to add some dimensions. So click on dimension, click on the bottom line, move your cursor down, and click. I want this to be two and a half inches long. As you can see, this has grown. If you use your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. Next, click on this line, and I want to move my mouse out, click, and type in two and a half inches. I'm going to click on this top line, move my mouse, click, type in 0.75, Click on this line, move my mouse, click, and type in 0.75. Next, I want to make sure that nothing moves. So I'm going to click on my coincident constraint, find my bottom most corner here, and attach it to my origin. As you can see, all of my lines have turned black. This means that it is fully constrained and we do not need to do anything further. Right click and click on OK. After you are done with your sketch, you can go ahead and click on Finish Sketch. This tells Inventor to switch over into a different ribbon. Zoom out so you can see your full object. We are going to extrude or create depth or that third dimension. And you can see right here in the dialog box, we have some information pop up. The profile was this L shape. It's from our first original XY plane. And we want our distance to be 2.5. Once you have that, go ahead and click OK. We have the beginning of a 3D model. Next, let's add some features. Move your mouse and click on this top face. As you see, four buttons appear. And we can click on any one of these options. Edit Extrude. Edit Sketch. Share Sketch. And Create Sketch. Click on Create Sketch. As you can see, we are now looking at the top of it. But if you check out the view cube, you notice that the top is rotated. So I'm going to click on this button here, so that way it turns it and I'm looking at it from directly above. Go ahead and create the same lines that you see here. Let's add dimensions. Click and move your mouse and type in 2.5. Click and move your mouse, 2.5. Click and move your mouse, 0.75. Click and move your mouse, 0.75.
and then use your coincident constraint to lock in this corner with the origin. Go ahead and click, right click OK, and finish sketch. Go ahead and extrude this feature. Inventor automatically sees the profile and it wants to extrude it in the default direction. I don't want to go in the default direction. I want to change that direction from default to flipped. I want to have this as my shape. Once you have that, go ahead and say OK. Next, let's add a circular cutout. Click on this face and go to Create Sketch. Create a circle and place it somewhere on this face. Let's dimension this circle. Click on the circle and then the back line. Type in 1.25. Our diameter of this circle should be 0.75 and our last dimension that we need should be 0.75. Once you have that, go ahead and finish your sketch. Then click Extrude. You can see that it automatically selects it and sends it in the default direction. We want to change this and click on Flipped, and instead of a distance, we want it to go through all. That just says to Inventor, I want this circle to go through the entire part. Click on OK, and let's create another feature. Click on this face and choose Create Sketch. Click on Project Geometry so we can see what we have here. All this does is it creates these yellow lines that we can use as reference. Draw a regular angled line like so. Click on Dimension, click on the top line and our angled line. We want this to be 45 degrees. Click on our angled line and move directly up. Click and type in 1. Once you have that, finish your sketch and go to Extreme. As you can see, Inventor does not select a profile because Inventor sees a triangle, this rectangular shape with a triangle cut out, and other lines and a full and a full rectangle. Inventor is unsure and doesn't know what to select, so we have to tell Inventor I want to cut out this triangle. It sends it in the default direction, but we want it to flip and cut out that section. Instead of saying through all, we want to say to. Click on that, and we want to go to this face. Inventor understands, does the cut, and we can say OK. This is helpful when you don't remember what exact dimensions are. Once you have this, now we can save it. Go up to the Save button, and we can save this anywhere within our Inventor folder. 